Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about five reasons not to buy a manual transmission vehicle. In other words, five big disadvantages of manual transmissions. And while I personally have owned many manual transmission vehicles and I hope to include others in my garage in the future, uh, it can't be denied that there are real benefits to an automatic transmission over manual transmission engines. And so we are sitting inside of the Dodge Hellcat Red Eye, which only offers an automatic transmission. It's got nearly 800 horsepower and yet they only offer an automatic transmission much like the Dodge Demon which this shares an engine with. So the first big disadvantage of manual transmissions that I want to get into that relates to this car here and especially you know at a drag strip or for a performance reason is launching and so when you think about launching with a manual transmission or an automatic transmission an automatic transmission uses a torque converter and torque converters have torque multiplication and so what this means is when the engine is spinning so if I spin up the engine and I have it in drive but the rear wheels obviously aren't moving then there's a difference in speed between that torque converter and the transmission and that difference in speed trades efficiency for torque. And so what it means is you can actually nearly double the torque output uh, for that moment when you have your engine spinning up and your wheels not moving. Whenever there's a speed differential, you're trading torque for efficiency. So you're heating up that fluid, you don't want to do it for a long time, but you get more torque. In a manual transmission, it's just a one-to-one -one because you have that mechanical connection, you have the clutch plate, uh, the clutch and the pressure plate and the flywheel all sandwiching together and so it's just a one-to-one. -one. You don't actually multiply the torque. So if you were to take two identical vehicles, one manual and one automatic, from a launch, from that very beginning, especially with vehicles which aren't traction limited, not really the case with 800 horsepower here, but especially the case when it's not traction limited, you can actually have greater wheel torque with the same vehicle in that automatic transmission because the engine is spinning up but the transmission isn't, so that torque converter is multiplying the torque that goes to the wheels. Now continuing with the theme of launching, so number two, we're talking about how hard it is on your transmission to launch the vehicle. So in a manual transmission, you rev up the engine, you drop the clutch, and you're either doing one of two things. You're slipping the clutch and that's saving you know the shock from hitting your transmission or you're not slipping the clutch so you don't damage your clutch. You, you either spin your wheels or get it to hook up nice but either way you're sending a shock through your entire transmission, a big shock load. With an automatic transmission you put your foot on the brake, you put your foot on the gas, it loads up that transmission and then you let go and you can start accelerating. And this isn't going to be as tough on the transmission because as you release your foot from the brake it eases into the throttle and so you know that torque is already loaded up in the transmission and it's easy for it to then start accelerating. It's not this big shock load that you're placing on the transmission. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't damage an automatic transmission by launching it. It's just that it has that torque converter which is a fluid coupling so you're heating up a fluid and eventually yes you could get that too hot but you're using a fluid to take the brunt of that work rather than the transmission itself when you dump that clutch and then it's all that force is going through your entire drivetrain. So with an automatic transmission, it's a much smoother process of sending that torque to those rear wheels. Now, number three is crawling. And so if you don't have a low gear range in your manual transmission vehicle, it's very difficult for it to crawl because it's based on your first gears ratio. And so at these low speeds, if you want to travel at a really low speed, two, three miles an hour, say you're sitting in traffic or you're off road and you need to just drive very slowly to get over an obstacle, it's very hard to do that with a manual transmission. The way that you do it is by slipping the clutch. Clutch. And so you're doing that by wearing the clutch rather than just having a fluid coupling like an automatic transmission which has a torque converter and it's not hard on it to just inch forward. Now obviously if your car does have a low gear range then you can crawl in manual transmission vehicles but this is usually only common on off-road vehicles and even still there are plenty of off-road vehicles which don't offer it you know lighter duty off-road vehicles and also you know for for everyday driving most cars won't have it and so driving on the road if you're in traffic, if there's inclement weather, let's say there's snow or ice and you need to kind of crawl up a hill at a low speed, uh, you know, then depending on the scenario, uh, you know, having the ability to be able to crawl can be very beneficial. And unfortunately, with manual transmissions, that simply means wearing out your clutch more than you would want to. Now, number four is one of the more obvious ones, and that is shift speed. So automatics are not only faster because of torque multiplication, uh, but they can also be faster because they shift faster faster. And simply put, computers and modern automatic transmissions, even the 8-speed, uh, you know, traditional automatic here, which uses planetary gears, is much quicker than a human is going to be for shifting gears. 
so whether it's a dual clutch or today's modern automatics, oftentimes they're going to be much quicker than a manual transmission as far as shifting gears. Now, I don't think that's that big of a deal, but if you're looking for pure speed, it is a disadvantage. So in a racing environment, you know, manual transmission isn't really going to offer you that advantage of shift speed. And part of the thing is, I mean, it takes a certain amount of time to move your foot in and out, and it takes a certain amount of time in order to move that gear lever forward or backwards. And so that time is time that a computer, you know, isn't, you know, it's not a human. It's not using human uh, reflexes and speed to do it. It's using mechanical reflexes and speed, which is just so much faster. And so, you know, even this, uh, and this is a great automatic transmission. One of the best out there is the ZF8 Speed, and, you know, they do a really fantastic job with it. So, you know, even if you're on low throttle, it still shifts fast. If you get into higher throttle, it shifts even faster. So this is a fantastic transmission. Uh, and, you know, there's good reasons why Dodge only offers the automatic here with the Hellcat Red Eye. Uh, and, you know, as a, as a kind of drag race style car, that makes sense. Now, the fifth and final point is the fact that manual transmissions are really easy to stall. It's almost impossible to stall out an automatic transmission vehicle. And in a manual transmission, you know, this is obviously nothing informative to someone who's been driving a manual transmission, but all it takes is lifting your foot off the clutch while you're in gear, while you're stopped, and that engine's gonna stall out. And so as an example, uh, I was driving a Ford Focus RS for the first time, and it was parked downhill, and I needed to back up. And I had never driven the vehicle before so I get in it you know and I start to release the clutch and it turns out it has a really short clutch throw in the Ford Focus RS so as a result you know I've driven plenty of cars I've driven tons of manual transmissions I rarely if ever stall in my own cars but you know the first time driving that Ford Focus RS I wasn't used to the clutch and I stalled it out the first time I tried to back up on that hill and you know that's not that big of a deal you get used to it but part of it is you know you may have friends that don't know how to drive a manual transmission vehicle so if you go on a long road trip which I do all the time in my Subaru Crosstrek uh, you know my wife knows how to drive it I know how to drive it but our other friends if we want to rotate and we're on a really long road trip and they don't know how to drive it you know driving on the highway in a Subaru Crosstrek is nothing all that thrilling so trading off is kind of a benefit so when you do have an automatic transmission vehicle anybody can get in it and that's kind of you know uh, even more glorified with something like this vehicle right here because anyone can just go to the dealer and buy an 800 horsepower vehicle and then just go drive off in it and they can be a clueless driver I mean it doesn't take much to get your driver's license in the United States uh, and and anybody can get in this thing and then go drive it and I think part of that is why we see some of the you know the anecdotal stories in the news uh, but automatics are very easy very approachable and that's a true advantage to them Having a manual transmission, it requires you to spend a little time learning how it works, understanding it, uh, and, you know, mastering the art of shifting and the art of accelerating and downshifting and that kind of thing in a manual transmission. So it's more effort. Uh, and if you're the type of person that just doesn't want any effort, and some people don't like driving, so that's fine, automatics do make sense in that scenario as well. So thank you all so much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those below.